This is Michelle from Jasami Publishing with another episode of Jasami Bookworm Podcast. Today's is slightly different. I know I usually have a guest. However, editing has become quite a focal part recently, and so I thought I would take the opportunity to review a few uh, editing processes and ideas for those of you who are writing and will be going through your first edit on your own. So the first place I would like to start with is about the actual writing of the story. Everybody writes in their own way in the process of you do it and where you do it. And, you know, if you're in a crowd, if you're in a cafe, if you're at home, if you've, you know, locked yourself in the bedroom or you've locked yourself out somewhere, you've gone for a walk to be inspired, where you do it, where you're most comfortable with it is very important. So do that. Another key part is, now this is personal preference, but I think it's the best idea is to get the story written. Not with stops and starts for, I'll write a couple of chapters and go back and edit it. You want to get the whole story out on paper, in your document, so that you know where it's going before you start the editing process. Because if you write part of the book and then you go back to edit, you don't have all of the characters developed. You don't know, you know, with the editing, that's what you need. You need the whole story. So that's the first part. So just continue writing. Keep at it, keep at it, and keep at it. And then when you're done, if you've printed it out, put it in a drawer. If you haven't, if it's in a document, put it away and leave it for at least two weeks, preferably four. And the reason for that is that you've spent so much time with these characters, you need to give your brain a rest. It also gives you the opportunity to go out, maybe uh, catch a few more uh, dialogue terms, do a little bit of more in-depth research for a particular scene or a particular subject. So the first step is you've gotten the book out there. Second step, you're giving yourself a rest from it walked away. Then the third step, self-editing. Editing is not easy. Writing the story is, that's the creative process and we all love and enjoy that. The editing is a bit more challenging because what you have to do is you have to consider the arc of your story. You have to consider the consistency of your characters. Does your character's personality remain true to how you want that person to grow and develop in the novel? Even, you know, your protagonist, you know, no protagonist has to be perfect. You want them to have a few flaws so that they've grown and at the end of the book, they might have a few different flaws, but they they seem a better character. Your... uh, the other characters in it, you know, it could be friends, it could be, you know, your bad guy, depending on if you're writing a murder mystery or if it's a, a romance, you know, the couple and how they bounce off each other. So that's the thing you want to think about. And then do a quick read through, I would say a skim. And don't change anything at that point in time, just maybe note on a page or physically or highlight it and go back to it but you just want to skim it and then you'll have the idea of oh yes the arc of the story is great all right um my my characters are remaining true to the personality quips and difficulties they've had and how they've grown Uh, and consider each character the voices of the characters sound true to themselves Not everybody will speak in the same way. Uh, For example, if uh, it's set in Glasgow, you might have a wee Glaswegian there, and you'll need to have the correct uh, tones and idioms and all the right words. And if they know someone who's, as we say, quite posh, and they'll have a very different way of speaking. Conjunctions. Sometimes the very posh, they might not. We will do that. We'll do that. How does your character sound? So you've done the skim through, you feel good about that. 
and this is where you're going to start the next edit. Now when you go through the editing part, your eyes, and it's a physiological part of life, your eyes will start to fill in, your brain will start to fill in what it thinks should be there. So if you have a particularly challenging scene or a setting in the book, all you have to do is read it out loud. Reading it out loud, you'll remember that if there's a comma in there, you should pause, but not too long. If it's a full stop, you know that's a longer pause. I have a perfectly wonderful example. The commas, you need a pause. I already ate, Grandma. So you know you're telling Grandma that you already ate. If you don't put the comma in there, you say, I already ate grandma. Believe me, we don't believe in eating grandmas. Not, not a good thing, not a good thing. So you know to pause when you see that comma. If you haven't done your punctuation yet or you're worried about it, you think it needs to go in there, go ahead and do it. Usually changing punctuation is do done during the proof proofreading towards the end of the book. So I wouldn't worry as much about it unless it is in the dialogue and it will make a difference. So if you have a challenging scene, read it out loud. Don't run through it. Read it slowly so that you actually are absorbing the scene. You're absorbing what's being said. You're listening to the tone. Is someone bellowing? Is someone whispering? Are they running down the street? Do they have a stammer? What's going on with it? What is that type of scene? And what do you want to add to it? Now, this is an example that I tell everybody. When you've got it, you want to use, you want to be succinct. However, you want to create the right tone. And I love this example. I watched the sunset. Well, that sets a nice tone. You know someone's there watching a sunset. However, if they use, I watched the blood red sunset, that changes what you're looking at, the way you're seeing that scene immensely. You know it's blood red. You can set the tone for it. You know it sets the, the vibrance of the red color. And then also it could be kind of a, a small foreshadowing for what's going to happen next. Or it could be, just that it's a description so that someone will have a better idea of exactly what that sunset looks like. Length of sentences is extremely important to think about. If you use shorter sentences, obviously that creates tension and drama. It's staccato. You have that. If you have a longer sentence that flows, that's going to set a sense of description and rather than he jammed on the brakes Ted jumped out of the car he ran down the road he chased the bandit those are all short sentences rather than Ted decided that he was going to have a wonderful dinner with Amber so he looked through the cupboards to decide exactly what he should make. Oh, all the ingredients were there to make her favorite dinner, a beautiful lasagna. So that's a little bit more languid. He's considering things. You wouldn't do short. He stopped at the cupboard. He opened the door. He looked inside. That's creating the tension. Those simple little word sentence structures make all the difference. The other part is that you have to be cruel to be kind. And the reason I say that is that we have to, if it doesn't progress the story, then how important is it? Is it there to set the scene for the story? Is it there to define the characters? You know, is it there 
just because it's there and you love the writing and it's so beautiful and you just want to have that page in there because it's so beautifully crafted. We have to be cruel to be kind to say, yes, that needs to come out. It doesn't progress the story. And on the other hand, make sure if you do take out a scene that it is saved somewhere. Because when you go through the editing process, if you've done it once, twice, if you're on your third edit, you might be taking out things that are quite important that do need to stay in there. So you have to think about that. I always say, save it, put it in a separate document, because it might be a beautiful scene that you can use somewhere else, either later in the book or in another book. Writing should never be, I don't think, deleted. I think it should just be moved. There is one book I will say that I've used for many, many years. It's called Elements of Style. It's a very thin book and you can get a PDF copy for free on the internet. And it's been used by writers throughout the year, uh, throughout many years. And I think that's a great little place to start because it has short examples in there. So I do think that that's a wonderful place. If any of you have questions about writing and such, I'd be happy to do another podcast to chat about it. It doesn't take very long, and I'd like to really discuss particular items that might be mm, challenging your creative writing. So, today's been a little bit chat. I've been doing all the chatting. However, it's just to give you some ideas about editing, to acknowledge that it's not an easy process, and that it requires more patience than actually creating the story. You do have to pay attention to all of the details, to your character's personalities. They're staying true to their character while developing throughout the novel. That there's the difference in the way they speak, that it's true to them, who they are, and that as you you read it, you say each scene progresses the story. You use the words that will create the the scene in someone's mind. For example, watching the sunset or watching the blood red sunset. Same as she screamed. Yep, yeah, that that describes it. She let loose a blood curdling scream which is more evocative, which creates the tension. That's what you have to ask yourself. So anybody who would like to uh, ask me any questions, please feel free to get on the website and pop it through there in an email. Uh, We've got the connections. Or send me an email if you'd like to have another lesson on self-editing or any other questions. We are looking for new material for our podcasts at all points in time. So this is where we do our shout out. So today's shout out is to all of the Jasami editors who work so hard to make all of the books that we produce or help self-publish the best they can be and that we can always improve and always make things better. So my shout out is to our editors. Thank you for all of the work you do. It's wonderful, and it's a pleasure working with all of you. So again, this is Michelle from Jasami Bookworm Podcast, and as always, I wish you a sunny day. Mm